the single most important thing I can teach and show and demonstrate and talk about with regards to keeping a very strong, good pocket with your right hand and your rhythm playing is that your hand moves like this and it never stops. No matter what you hear, no matter what comes out of the guitar, you're either grabbing air or you're grabbing notes or chords. And if you move fast, you can get a 16th note thing and your options open up. If you move slow, you still have good options. You see, I'm either grabbing the actual notes and strings I'm grabbing air, but this thing never stops. And that's what keeps things steady. And you don't have to think about it. You turn off your mind and you just have fun. When you go to 16th, like I said, the options open up. I was either hitting the note or I was grabbing air. very important to this concept is the left hand too because you need to mute all the strings that you're not playing and you don't want to hear. Now let's talk about muting for a second. All I was trying to get is one note. I was using my index finger fret it here at fret 5 on the G string but I took all the other fingers that were available and I just let them lay across the strings to mute it. And if you have to think about this don't worry because eventually you won't have to think about it. It'll just become second nature. What happens is anytime I don't want to hear the note, I don't want it to sustain, these just drop down, particularly this, this finger. And then the thumb is arched over the low E string to block it. And that way, I literally, I can aim for one note. But in this particular case, I'm hitting the top four strings. I could actually hit all six. It gets a little heavy down here with the thumps from the harmonics from these strings. So I do try and aim for the top four in this situation. Well, actually I'm aiming for the top three, but I'm hitting the D string on accident. It doesn't matter because it's being muted. And all with the available flesh here. If I just use my index finger and I aim properly, I can have the same effect, but it's much better protect all the open strings, just in case you bump something by mistake. And sometimes it's good to hear the clickiness of the muted strings. Other times you just want air. Same thing is happening, but you're grabbing air. And that's probably the hardest thing to get used to if you're new to this, is strumming air. choice is also very important for something like this too. When I'm strumming acoustic guitar, I'll get a pick that's even softer than this, a Dunlop nylon that's gray, that's really, really soft. You don't hear any brush strokes at all. And no matter how hard I pick, it still comes out pretty soft. So if I'm strumming acoustic, here's one right here. It is a Dunlop 0.73 millimeter, really soft. You don't even hear it. Now, I don't play that hard when I use this, but if I do play hard, it's kind of a governor and it still sounds kind of soft and even. So I like this for acoustic strumming or the kind of electric strumming where you're imitating acoustic. So once again, the same theory applies. Your right hand is moving constantly and you're just picking up the strokes you want and grabbing air when you don't want to hear the sound. So for ensemble rhythm playing, playing to a track, playing funk, playing rock, I like a medium pick best because it's soft enough to where I can get a bounce and a good pocket 
It's giving a little bit. It feels good. It's not hitting the strings too hard, but it's hitting them hard enough to where I can also be accurate. hitting it pretty hard and it's not giving in too much but it's just giving in a little and it creates a nice bounce. Bounce is a really good word for rhythm playing. It, it'll, it'll help you to understand what a good pocket is. You want to have a bounce in all your playing. A little bit of a swing, a little bit of a good pocket. And certainly this constant up and down is your best tool to enable you to do that, to keep a good pocket, to keep a steady rhythm so that you're right there with the drums all the time. So you have three choices when you're moving like this. You can either strike a fretted note, a muted note, or strike air. And that creates rhythm patterns. Those three strings, those three things <laughs> create all the rhythm patterns. So if you go, it's a choice whether you're grabbing air or a fretted note or a muted note. See, just, that was maximum air, but it kept my hand in motion and it kept me steady. And if I was playing along with a drummer, I wouldn't have to think about it because I'm actually, this is my timekeeper. Of course, it's easier and a lot of that stuff disappears. That's the cool thing about playing in a band. A lot of these rhythm things, the muted strokes just disappear. They, they, they become like a percussionist. So let me demonstrate what it sounds like to change out muted strokes for what I call air strokes. Here we go. So they sound very different and you become a different percussionist when you change out those air strokes for the muted strokes. And as you can see, the hand never stops doing this. That's the key.